I want to talk about this Omicron variant, and I think this is a really important conversation. If it turns out to be much, much milder, but far more contagious, how do we treat that from a policy perspective? From your standpoint, sir, how do we make that change? It all comes down to hospitalization rates and severe disease rates. Um, there's preliminary data now suggesting that a boost will probably give you a really good immune response that protects against Omicron. And therefore, if that holds true, then the current strategy of getting people boosted uh, should be able to limit our severe disease cases and allow us to keep going without any major changes in what's go in our public health uh, intervention policies. But, you know, we're far away from that because we're certainly dealing right now with a Delta surge that's really approaching uh, peak levels that we've ever seen here in the U.S. And so we're really in a bit of a pickle here in terms of trying to figure out how to deal with the current Delta as well as prepare for a potential Omicron. There are a lot of issues embedded in there. I want to tease out one idea of quarantining if you're exposed because that's been highly disruptive, especially for kids who've gone back to school or people going to the workplace. And this is one a big reason why people are worried about bringing people back to the offices. How transmissible is somebody who has been inoculated three times, who let's say gets a breakthrough infection or even twice? Are they as infectious as an unvaccinated individual? Uh, the data suggests that you still will be more likely to, to not transmit the virus. There are certainly some cases out in the literature right now where if someone who's been vaccinated gets a strong infection and has a lot of virus, they can transmit. But in the, for, the, for most people, vaccination will reduce the transmission of, the, of both Delta and we assume now for Omicron um, um, to other individuals. So vaccination still is the route to sort of turn the curve here. I think the thing we really have to think about right now, particularly when it comes to Omicron, is we've seen data that's mostly focused on vaccinated people and individuals who are relatively healthy. We haven't seen cases of Omicron in vulnerable populations, the elderly, immunocompromised, people um, on, on cancer therapies. It's what Omicron does in those populations that don't have the protection induced by the vaccine that is going to be really important to, to judge because if those vulnerable parts of the population are even more sensitive to severe disease with Omicron, then we really have to rethink some of our public health approaches. But Andy, from a public health perspective, just going back to vaccinated individuals, if they are not that uh, contagious, they don't spread the virus, why are they being tested five, six, seven times to travel in any way, shape or form? Why is there still this surveillance and possible uh, quarantining of them if they get exposed and if they get a breakthrough infection? It, it goes down to the layered approach to limit transmission and limit spread of the virus. So we never want to rely on one thing. And oftentimes the testing combined with vaccination status is used as at least two ways to make sure that we're catching 90 plus percent of people who are potentially infectious. And so that's really the point here uh, when it comes to that strategy. I will say, though, that there are better strategies to do the testing rather than our, our nasal swab PCRs. Um, antigen testing, at-home testing, these are things that we in the U.S. in particular haven't taken advantage of that could make this whole process of testing and being certain that you can go back to work back to uh, traveling uh, much more easier. Well, obviously, in the U.S., we do have the advantage that we can get access to that testing if we if we try hard enough. We also have ample access to vaccinations and booster shots, whereas a lot of the world doesn't even have a large portion of their population given their initial doses yet. And the WHO is saying, hold the conversation on boosters. We need to focus on getting more of the world vaccinated before we have that conversation. Do you think we're misaligning our priorities? Yeah, it, 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 it's important to note that a global pandemic requires a global response. And certainly getting more vaccine to other countries has to be a high priority. I realize that there are always interests in terms of protecting our own population to the, to the greatest degree possible. But at the end of the day, Omicron is showing us yet again what we can expect from SARS-CoV-2 if we don't get even better at vaccinating the world. 
the, the doses that have been given so far to Africa are a great first step, but if you think about the population of Africa and the doses that have been promised, we're still nowhere close to being able to move on that one continent to a level of protection in the population that would help us really reduce the amount of variants that are emerging.